Hello, my name is Father DiTomo, Father Christopher DiTomo. I am a priest of the Diocese of Rockford, Illinois, uh, and I'm also the pastor of St. Gall, a parish in Elburn, Illinois. You know, there are a lot of questions today about marriage and relationships. In fact, the Catholic Church had a worldwide synod recently uh, to discuss issues and challenges facing marriages and the family. And Pope Francis has called on bishops and priests to compassionately accompany the Catholic faithful to meet them where they are and to help try to lead them to where the Lord is calling them to be. And so this video series is just my uh, little humble way locally of trying to answer that challenge. Uh, you know, actually for several years I've wanted to do a teaching series on to address some of these very questions. And I finally got around to, do it, to doing it and I'm very excited about it. Um, now you might ask, why should I watch these videos? I'm just asking you to, to at least listen for another few minutes so I can try to get you to watch these videos. Why should I watch these videos? Well, perhaps you're married and then you got divorced and, and then you civilly remarried. Or perhaps you're in a relationship now and you're wondering if you should even get married in the Catholic Church. What's, what's the big deal? What's the point? What difference does it make? Um, perhaps you're living with someone and you're wondering if even getting married at all matters. Uh, maybe you've wondered whether or not you, know, you, can, you can or should receive the sacraments of confession and Holy Communion if you're married, divorced, and remarried outside the church, for example. That's a question that's very common, and uh, a lot of people are talking about it. Maybe you long for love in, in a relationship, but you also want God to be part of that relationship, and you, and you want your, your faith life to be consistent with your love life. That's a, that's, a, that's a good desire. Uh, maybe you're not in any of these situations, but you know someone who is, a, a son or a daughter or a friend, a brother or sister, and you just want to understand more about why the church teaches what it does. Well, if any of what I've just said describes you or someone you know, then this video series is for you. And certainly, if you're watching this video, then you're at least interested in the subject of marriage and love and the church. And you know, God wants to do amazing things in the lives of his people. He wants to do amazing things in your life. And certainly, he wants to do amazing things within the relationships of people. And that includes marriages. In fact, marriage is such a precious thing that God's church goes to great lengths to uh, protect it and to safeguard it. So in this series, we're going to explore several things. First, we're going to explore the precise manner in which a Catholic is supposed to get married. We will explore what it means for a marriage to be valid or invalid in the eyes of God and the Church. We will discuss some of the benefits of a valid marriage and a sacramental marriage. And we're also going to discuss some of the consequences of entering into an invalid marriage and what could be done about that. Can and should a person who is in an invalid marriage or living with someone outside of marriage go to confession, and or receive Holy Communion. What if someone's marriage is invalid? How can this be determined? We'll, we're going to explore that question. We will also consider what happens if someone was married in the church, but their marriage fell apart, and now looking back, they think that maybe there was some key element or elements of what is necessary for a marriage to truly be valid as understood by the Catholic Church, that were missing from the very moment that vows were exchanged. What is that process? We've all heard about those things called annulments, uh, the church annulment. What is it? And how does that process work? How would one pursue that? What's involved? We're going to explore that as well. Perhaps some of these questions have already gotten your attention and you want some answers right now. Well, I'm going to give you a quick overview right now. But I really, really encourage you to also watch the rest of the episodes because um, this series is intended so that if you watch it, you can really understand why the church teaches what she, te she teaches. So a little overview of the episodes. Episode one is called, How Should a Catholic Get Married? And it's about 15 minutes long. I like to try to do things shorter, but sometimes things are compl complex issues. You've got to kind of take a little more time to explain them. So it's 15 minutes long, not too long. Episode two is uh, called Effects of Invalid Marriage 
and reception of the sacrament of confession. And that's about 24 minutes long. Uh, episode 3 is called Effects of an Invalid Marriage and Reception of Holy Communion. And that's about 27 minutes long. So that's going to look at the two issues of, of uh, receiving the sacraments of confession and Holy Communion. Episode 4 is called How to Get Your Civil Marriage Validated in the Catholic Church. And that's about, uh, well, actually I don't know the exact length of time on that, but it's not too long. Check, check out episode 4. Episode 5 is called um, Declaring a Marriage Invalid and the Annulment Process. And that episode has, it actually has two parts. Uh, so um, check out those two videos. Episode 5 is the longest video because it, it, it deals, uh, it, it explains a lot of information. But um, I think you'll find them interesting. Please watch them. Uh, I'm going to actually give now just a quick overview of what this series is about. Um, you know, someone who's baptized Catholic is obligated to follow what is called canonical form. That is, in the Church's Code of Canon Law, the form for which a Catholic is to uh, get married is uh, clear, clearly laid out. So someone who's baptized Catholic is supposed to get married before an authorized priest or deacon and two witnesses, and it's generally in a Catholic church. Um, episode 1 explains this, and actually the, the reasons why the church has this requirement and how it's good for marriage. Um, so that'll explain that. But what happens when a Catholic does not marry in that way? Well, if, if that's the case, while the couple will be married civilly, um, in other words, in the eyes of the state they're married, but in the eyes of the church and the eyes of God, they are uh, in what's considered an invalid marriage. So it, marriage is considered invalid in that it does not have everything required to be what the church considers necessary for marriage. In episodes two and three, we're going to look at the effects of entering into an invalid marriage. One effect of being in an, inv in an invalid marriage is that while the couple is considered married in the eyes of the state, they're not considered married in the eyes of God and the church. So this is going to affect how a person participates in the life of the church. You know, in order to be able to receive the sacraments, a person needs to be, among other things, they need to be in a state of grace. Uh, they need to be living a life of discipleship. They need to be living as a disciple of Christ. No one's perfect, but they need to be living that life of discipleship, a life that's consistent with a follower of Jesus. Now, a lot of people could be truly striving to live life as a disciple of Christ. I know a lot of, so many people like that. Uh, they could be men and women of, of deep prayer. They could be um, people who do, they go to Mass, they worship God faithfully. They do acts of charity. They, they may be incredibly generous people and self-giving people. Uh, but there might be an issue with regards to marriage or their relationship status that could be a block to them re uh, receiving the grace of the sacraments. Because romantic relationships have a unique dynamic in the lives of men and women. You know, our, our hearts and passions can sometimes pull us into directions that aren't always consistent with the laws of God, with the teachings of Christ, or the, the way of uh, a disciple. Um, that's just how our world is. Um, you know, our culture teaches us that as long as there are, you know, two consenting adults, sex can mean whatever a person wants it to mean. Uh, sex is considered just, you know, it's a normal part of every person's life, whether they're married or not. And of course, the reality is that God has a very beautiful, specific plan uh, for married love and for sexual love. Uh, it's a powerful plan. And Jesus Christ revealed the true meaning of love and the, ch and the church he established has the job of uh, presenting that vision and safeguarding it. Chastity is important here. Chastity is the virtue whereby a person successfully integrates their sexuality within their person. So in other words, um, it's, chastity is about having a unity of the bodily and the spiritual being. With chastity, how a person expresses themselves sexually is in line. It's, it's whole. It's one piece with who they are spiritually. And who we are spiritually includes things like our state in life, whether we're married or whether we're a celibate or whether we're single, the various states of life. Um, and sex is considered the way that a person 
in the Catholic understanding, it's considered the way that a person makes a complete gift of themselves uh, to their spouse within a valid marriage. And it's actually a, a way a, a man and wife renew their vows, the vows that they made in the church. Um, and so if a person is sexually active outside of a, mar of a valid marriage, then they're engaging in actions that are objective, objectively and seriously sinful. And so a person cannot receive the sacrament of confession without first repenting of such actions and then making a firm purpose of amendment that they're going to do everything they can to avoid those sins in the future. So a person cannot receive the sacrament of holy uh, communion unless they've confessed any and all serious sins, all mortal sins, and have the intention to avoid those sins in the future. Um, and this could be, you know, and also a person cannot receive the sacrament of confession unless they repent. So these two um, sacraments of confession and Holy Eucharist uh, are the ways by which we renew our, our, our vow to, to live for the Lord. And certain actions can become blocks to grace. Now this can be a challenge, but, you know, again, we think of the words of, of St. John Paul II, be not afraid. Be not afraid. So we're going to explore, if you're in any kind of situation like this, where you're in a regular marriage situation, but you want to grow closer to God, and now you may think maybe there's a barrier to me receiving communion or confession, um, we're going to explore how you can see what the Lord's will is for you and how you can follow that. In episode four, we're going to look at the steps that are involved in having your invalid marriage, that is, a merely civil marriage, uh, made valid in the church, in the eyes of the church. In episode five, uh, that's by the way called a, a validation or a convalidation of a marriage. In episode five, we're gonna look at ways that the church can declare that a previous marriage was in fact invalid. There's really two main ways the church can do that. One is by applying for what's called a declaration of invalidity due to lack of form. And that is a process simply whereby a person proves that one of the two people that were married uh, was baptized Catholic and therefore that they were obligated to follow the church's law on how to marry, but then they didn't, ma they didn't marry that way, and so the marriage was invalid. But that has to be documented, uh, the, the information shown to the church, and the church has to declare that, that fact. Um, and um, this might free a person up to get married in the Catholic Church, you know, so as a, as a, through a validation or through a new marriage, whatever. Um, so that's a good thing. In episode five, we're going to look at the process commonly called the annulment process. This is the second way, major way, that a church a marriage can be declared to be invalid. Um, and that's whereby the, the church's marriage tribunal examines the evidence of a past marriage in order to assess whether or not some key element that was necessary for a valid marriage was there or not at the time that vows were exchanged. Um, so we're going to look at that. Finally, I wish to encourage all of you out there who are divorced. Um, you're part of the church. You're part of the church and God has a plan for you. And I'm considering ways that my parish can assist you in living your life as a disciple of Christ. Uh, people who are divorced, families who suffer from divorce have great challenges. And sometimes they can feel like they're on the outside. And you're not. And we're going to look for ways that as a church, as a parish, we can um, reach out to you and help you to live your life uh, according to the Lord's call and find happiness in doing His will. So be on the lookout for more things in the future. You know, I tackle some heavy topics in these videos. Hopefully you could probably already see that by what I've just talked about. But again, in the great words of St. John Paul II, be not afraid. Let's never be afraid of the truth. Let's never hide from it. So let's examine what it means to be married in the church and let's all pray. Let's all pray and move on to the specific episodes. I'll be praying for all of you and uh, may Almighty God bless you.